afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another bit of Propaganda Cars News here with more stuff from the December Balance Preview. There was a small update right there about Friday, and for those wondering why well, it wasn't up yesterday, well, the whole bit with uh, the cold attacking my teeth, leading to not having enough sleep, just made me prioritize getting an episode up, and then just, you know, resting up for the rest. Got 10 hours of sleep from that one, by the way. So. Almost as the change you see, they sort of had, they made a bunch of the from change to the demo charges. Apparently, it turns out if they made them undefusable, it pretty much just bugged up the demo charge in the first place. There are some changes to the garrisons as well, so that there's a back way going. If you like, not the way could like units will keep running about trying to get in, but never quite get in, so they've changed some of the load times there for getting into houses. Furthermore, some nerfs here and there. For example, it turns out that buffing the alien of the Sherman was, in fact, a really bad idea, particularly the high explosive shells. So they thankfully and gracefully removed those or reverted those. I was a bit like, you know, wait, why are we doing this? In particular, when they're also making sort of applying some of the same stuff so it doesn't get caught up in the terrain like the Osprin. Like, why did it need more AoE? In fact, they gave the Osprin less AoE under the same circumstances, but decided that the high explosive shells of the Sherman needed more. Good lord. That was a bit of a weird one, which they thankfully reverted. The Dodge Shock also can now call in artillery, because, yeah, I guess it needed an artillery call in as well. So that's another one they sort of uh, snug in there. And then I think some of the bigger ones is basically the Oba Commando Vest Changer. They're doing also a bit of a vector a target artillery for the. Op the armored officers there will have a three second call in with or delay with smoke going there so people know they're gonna get hit. Um, but yeah, onto the upper command rest, there's some actually pretty big changes there for just sort of some smaller stuff. There, for example, the flak half track now, instead of having to wait to actually two tech to set up fast and sort of get moving fast, that's now veterancy right away. It doesn't need veterancy for that anymore, meaning the flak half track's biggest issue, which was it was slow as molasses to get you know anything set up, the track to deal with the enemy in time. That's gone. They nerfed the damage, but they get that damage back at veterancy too. That's huge for the flat half track. The flat half went for, you know, kind of good, but pretty difficult to play with to just, boom. It's actually good now. It's actually good. And they buff the MG for the force. That's also good, meaning, you know, the Orbital Commands now has some stuff they don't have to rely on as crutches like the Fulton is. And, like, the, the looks, which is sort of one of the main issues for so long. They had to rely on the looks, they had to rely on the full skills because nothing else particularly worked. And they've also switched about some of the veterans bonus. The Fudge Makers, in fact, they improved it. So now, veterans three, the Fudge Makers get some more punch and then they get the healing at veterans four. But still, that's also going to have a bit of an impact there on the Fudge Makers. They still only get three man per, you know, call in somewhere. Yeah. I'm still ambivalent about that one. I really think they should just, you know, pop rifle on them and, you know, get it done with. But uh, there you go. There you go. Oh, well, it's not so much else, at least as I would describe as notable there in the 1.6.1. Uh, I'll probably sort of overlook something that's still pretty amazing, but I uh, just, just the flat half track change is massive. The fudge maker change is pretty big. And the Sherman one, they had to do it in the first place, is a bit baffling. Again, like the high special shells of the Sherman were not. Bad in the first place, and they decide to buff it, and then realize, hey, turns out this is actually a pretty bad idea. Yeah, who would have thought? So that sort of largely covers sort of most of the changes there. Putting some stuff, I think, into sort of better relief, and again, just you know, making the Obercomers flat half tank actually good. Astounding. So there you go, your bit of news here from the propaganda master himself. Hopefully you have gotten something out of this, gotten some excitement, because, I mean, while they're certainly not doing a lot with the Wehrmacht's main issues, which again is based on the late, late game, sort of, you know, yeah, and again, like, they can easily be sort of locked down in the early game. I mean, with the Opera Commander, was actually now looking towards a faction that is actually going to be reasonably playable if all goes well, which is pretty huge. I mean, I mean, at least one playable Axis faction, which is... Better than no sort of, you know, functionally, you know, designed access factions, which is basically got we've got kinda now. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, got something out of it. You know, subscribe, like, share, comment on it. If you like what I do, do consider donating or pledging on Patreon. Links are in the video description. This is Imperial signing off and see you all for another video. Cheers.